Unlock the secrets of choosing the perfect podcast domain name with Lauren Andrews, a podcast manager with Pod Allies. From prioritizing .com domain names to avoiding common pitfalls, Lauren shares insider tips that will help you secure a memorable brand boosting domain for your show. Don't miss this essential guide to establishing your podcast digital home. Welcome to the Podcasting Secrets Show, where successful creators share their best stories, secrets, and strategies. I'm your host, Nathan Gwilliam. Hello, incurable creators, and thank you for joining us for this episode of Podcasting Secrets. Uh, Today, I'm joined by Lauren Andrews. Lauren is one of the amazing podcast producers here at uh, Pod Allies. So Pod Allies is the services division of Pod Up. As for people who they know they need a podcast, but they don't have time so that people like Lauren can go in and take care of all the other details, producing and, and publishing and, awesome. and marketing that pod- podcast. Thank you for joining us today. So what do you want to talk to us about today? So today I thought we would talk about domains because that's okay. something that we end up with a lot of questions on is understanding what a domain is and how it's different from your website itself. Okay. So at Pod Allies, we can do almost everything for them. Almost everything. But the domain name is something that they do have to do on their own. Why do they have to do the domain name themselves? Why can't we do the domain name for them? Because a domain name kind of saves your spot on the web, if that okay. makes sense. So your website may be the content that you're wanting to display, but having that page accessible to people requires that you buy a domain. And we don't host just millions and billions of domains like places like GoDaddy do. So that's where you need to go and obtain a domain so that we can connect the website that we may or may not be building for you onto that domain. And really, they don't want us owning their domain name. They need to own their own platform. They need to own their own real estate. You don't want to build a skyscraper on land you don't own. And the land that you're building your podcast website on is your domain name. Mm -hmm. And so you need to be the one that owns that and not us. If somebody else is building a podcast for you and they're owning your domain name, run far away. That'd be a very scary situation. Yeah, that's a problem. Because then they could take it away or or do something and and you would lose all of that work you'd put into it. Okay, so you wanna explain a little bit more about the specifics of of what a domain name is? What is a top level domain and a second level domain? Absolutely. a uh, domain is something that a lot of people might be familiar with without realizing it. So let's take, for example, www.website.com. Website within that is called a second level domain and .com is called a top level domain. Often so, referred to as a TLD. Yeah, or an SLD as well. Um, those change. Obviously, the Second level domain is going to be relative to, for example, your podcast or whatever the website is doing or whatever company is running it. Mm -hmm. The top level domain are also things that you would recognize, things like .com, .net, .org, .edu. And those kind of indicate what the site is supposed to be used for, but not all of them are specific to who can buy it or who can use it. You can obtain domains with all of those. Yeah, nowadays there seem to be hundreds of different top level domains. You see, you know, dot show or dot site or dot shop dot io, whatever. Yeah. So which TLDs should podcasters be looking at seriously? The ones that we recommend are you want to always cover your base and have your dot com because you don't want someone else to have your dot com. Yeah. And those are the most common. So you're right. There are certain situations where a dot com is not the best domain name for you. If you're a nonprofit organization, mm-hmm. if you're a church, people might expect you to be a, at a dot org instead of a dot com. Yeah. Um, I've seen some people uh, do dot nets as well. Maybe if they're a, a, a networking company or something, but generally it's best to have a dot com. And mm-hmm. the, the reason why I feel pretty strongly about that is let's say you were driving down the freeway. And there was a billboard and it said, you know, contact this attorney at one eight 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 and his number. I would bet you that even though that number is big and huge and has eight 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 on it, that 15 to 20 percent of the people are going to call one eight hundred that number. And the same thing is true about these top level domains. Mm-hmm. People expect that you're going to be at your top level domain dot com. Mm-hmm. If the name of my show is Podcasting Secrets, they're going to expect I'm at podcastingsecrets.com. Absolutely. When they're looking for my website, that's where they're going to go. Mm-hmm. And if I'm at podcastingsecrets.co and there's somebody else at podcastingsecrets.com, they're going to get a whole bunch of my traffic. I'm yeah. going to do that work 
and then it's just going to go to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people go with these other domain names because they may have to go pay a thousand or two thousand dollars sometimes to go buy the the podcastingsecrets.com, the top level domain.com um, with the, the name of their show. And they yeah. think that's a lot of money. But as you get into this, you think of all of that lost traffic and how much mm -hmm. time and effort and advertising cost it takes to get that many people to your site. I guarantee you spending a thousand or two thousand dollars on your domain name is probably far cheaper than what you're losing in, in traffic to yeah. your competitors who, yeah. who own well, and dot com. many of them aren't that expensive. That's right. It's very common to find ones that are much, much, much more reasonable for someone new to the game. That's exactly right. So you're not guaranteed to have to spend a grand on no, your domain. No, no, no. Every time I was just using that as it, a high end of what sometimes scares yeah, people away. It's still worth it. They, okay, so there's a couple secrets that, that I've used to, to help me find those inexpensive domains. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the first place that I usually always go when I'm looking for a d new domain for a new project is expireddomains.net. When I go to expireddomains.net, it's a huge database of millions of domain names that people have registered at one point and maybe even built a website at before, but then they didn't pay the renewal fee and they expired. Yeah. So there are domain names, millions of domain names that are sitting there that were good enough for people to register at one point, but they, nobody owns them right now. Mm -hmm. And so I'll go in and I'll type in my keyword, I'll use the features tool and I'll narrow it to only.coms. I'll narrow it to the number of characters, maybe 15 or 16 characters. Yeah. I'll narrow it to say, you know, must start with this keyword. And so you get it down to a manageable number of domains. Mm -hmm. um, and that's easy when you haven't named your project. That's it's a right. good way to choose a name, actually. That's right. It, it, that, exactly. And I'll use some other filters, like they have an adult word filter. So I'll take out adult words. I'll, I'll take out dashes. I'll take out numbers. You know, those make it hard to find. Uh -huh, that's right. And then I will look through those. And often I can find a domain name for, for that. Those ones are often free. And then you have to go pay 10 bucks to register it with exactly. a registrar. Yeah. Um, so that is a great place to start. Mm -hmm. If you cannot find a domain name there in expired domains, um, another really good place to go is, is some of these brokers. Usually brokers are really expensive and you have to pay through the nose to buy a domain name from a broker. But there's, there's some of them that are a lot more reasonably priced and they are much more willing to negotiate. My favorite bro broker by far is Buy Domains and you can get there at B-U-Y-D-O-M-A-I-N-S.com. And you can go there, they have a huge portfolio of domain names and uh, they they seem to be available generally for a lot less than what they are with other brokers. And they're generally much more reasonable at negotiating those prices down. So don't take their list price as, as a doctrine that that's, you know, what you have to pay. Uh, you mentioned something interesting, yeah. though. We, we said it twice, uh, not wanting dashes or numbers, but also by domain needing to spell. It's, it's B-U-Y, not B-Y. Yes. Those are things you should consider too. So when you're looking for your domain and when you're trying to decide what you want to be naming your podcast or whatever else you might need a domain for, dashes are things that people aren't going to intuitively add. Yeah, don't do it. Numbers are going don't to be confused, especially the number two. Two, two, and two. Yeah. And then uh, words that can be spelled in different ways, by and by. If your uh, user, if your uh, web guest has to guess to find you, you're eliminating traffic. Right. Today's episode of Podcasting Secrets is brought to you by Pod Allies, the done for you podcasting services solution. When I speak with CEOs about their podcast, one of the most common comments that I hear is that they know they need a podcast they don't have time. Have you ever wondered how some businesses find a way to still run their podcasts while juggling their crazy day-to-day -day operations? The secret might be simpler than you think. Let me introduce you to Pod Allies. This is a service that's changed the game for businesses in the podcasting world. Pod Allies is a done-for-you podcast production and marketing service. They understand that while many businesses understand the immense value podcasting can have for their business, finding time to produce, syndicate, promote, and monetize a show can be challenging. Pod Allies offers a dedicated team to handle virtually all aspects of your podcast production. From strategy and branding to audio and video editing and guest scheduling, they've got you covered. They even take care of creating blog posts, transcripts, and syndicating your content across multiple platforms. 
What sets Pod Alleys apart is their use of Pod Up, their proprietary podcasting software suite. This allows them to streamline the entire podcasting process, saving you time, effort, and a bunch of money. If you're ready to become a thought leader, connect with your audience, and grow your business through podcasting without all of the investment of time and cost of doing it yourself, Pod Alleys might be the perfect solution for you. To learn more or to schedule a free consultation with a podcast expert, visit podallies.com. That's P-O-D-A-L-L-I-E-S.com. Now back to the show. There are some situations where people can get away with misspelled domains or the number two or something. Usually not. I would always recommend against that. But in a podcast scenario, it's even more critical that you don't do that because if you're having to speak audibly, and they can't see your domain name. Some people, when they market, people can see their domain name and they have that advantage. Mm -hmm. But in your situation, in an audio format, they can't see it. Yeah. And if you have to spell out your domain name, every time you say your domain name, um, you, you've got the wrong domain name. Yeah. That does not work for a podcast. Absolutely. Well, going a little bit sideways from that, we talked about the pieces of a domain name, what make them up. There's also, you know, the addition of other countries might add like .uk and those yep. go on the other side of your .com. So and if they can get more complicated for sure. If you're a podcast that's focused on people in the UK or in Brazil and you focus on people in Brazil, then you can use .uk or .com.br, whatever the, mm -hmm. the country level extension is for that. But if you're wanting to reach the world, you know, .com is generally the one that's that's accepted that. as, as the global top level domain. Absolutely. Well, and the other thing that sometimes catches people up is what's the difference between my domain and my URL? And those seem interchangeable in some instances. And on a homepage, a lot of times they are. Your domain is kind of like your street address, you know, 123 West First Street. That's, that's your house, that's your domain. Your URL is even more specific. So it's which page on your website are you on? It's the room in your house, 123 West First Street, in the living room, on the couch. Your URL is a more specific thing. And if we only were able to operate off of URLs, then it would be much, much harder to navigate the web because you would have to remember the uh, domain URL, the letters you're typing in for every single page of a website. So thankfully that's not what we have to do, but yeah. that is the difference between the two of those. Another really important thing to think about with domain names is making sure you have consistency with the brand of your show, the name of your show and the domain name. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people, you know, they name their show one thing and they use uh, shortened words here. They add extra words to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you can't get your domain name, I would probably be okay adding the word show at the end of it or podcast at the end of it. Mm -hmm. um, generally, you don't want to put the word podcast in the name of your podcast, right? It's just assumed. Yeah. It's not the podcasting secrets podcast. So I, I would prefer if you can just get podcastingsecrets.com. That's better. Uh -huh. But if you, if you have to use that name mm -hmm. and you can't get podcastingsecrets.com, I would probably put the word show or podcast at the end. So podcastingsecretsshow.com, yeah. podcastingsecretspodcast.com. Yeah. And that also raises another issue is I try to avoid double letters and I absolutely avoid triple letters where you put words together. Mm -hmm. So podcasting secrets that ends with an S and then adding the word show at the end of it, you have the double S's. Uh, that tends to be a situation where people that causes a lot of misspellings when mm -hmm. people type in your domain name, when you cause the, the double letters of two words yeah. connecting. So people question whether or not that word is plural. That's right. So yeah. try to avoid that. You, you'll find with this one that is a bunch of people would type podcasting secret show.com and, and only put one S there mm -hmm. instead of the two. Well, and a good way that you can try to cover your bases in that uh, scenario is to have all of them and have those all be your domains. Have them all redirect. We do have a client who has multiple versions of yeah. her podcast uh, as a domain. She has ones that have the and ones that have podcast and the comb combinations of those. Yeah. So she's got four different domains because she wanted to cover her bases. And so we link all of them together to go to the website that we've built for her. But, and keep, that's an your, option, but... keep your brand focused on one of them and yes. then everything else is just a redirect into that yeah, one. It's a just in case somebody types it wrong and that's just right. so that nobody else can have it. Yeah. There's a thing called IDNs 
that are special characters. And those are used when you have a, a foreign character that's not an English character. And it'll, with an IDN, it allows you to put non-English characters in your domain names. Mm -hmm. uh, but don't do it. Don't ever do that. <laughs> Uh, it, it will it will result in somebody going to someone else's the domain name. So, yeah. just it, it's not worth it. Yeah, you lose your traffic. Somebody else gets your traffic. So, if you have a foreign level foreign language domain name and you have a special character, let's say you you have a Spanish domain name and and you're the you, let's say you have the tilde at the top of that. Just do it with the character without the tilde as your as your default character. Mm -hmm. I would vote as the way to do that. I think so too, especially since most of your your visitors to your site aren't going to know exactly how to go about typing in that n with a tilde yeah. if they're looking for what you're what you're putting out in the world and how long should a domain name be and how many words should a domain name have in it the legitimate limit is 63 characters but you don't want to be that long no. you want to be short and easy to remember without shortening a word that's so right it needs to make sense but your ideal scenario is to not have to add words to it so how long should it be? Ideally between 15 to 30 characters if you can do that, but three to four words max. Yeah. I generally try to go two words. If you can, in any scenario, try to get down to no more than two words if you can do that. Sometimes that's not possible. Like one of the shows that I have is Why We Believe, and that I had to go to three to get the concept. The, the phrase we believe didn't convey the meaning that I wanted to convey. Well, and it didn't keep consistent branding. That's right. That's right. And well, I would, if I couldn't have got the why we believe .com domain name, I would not have made that the name of the show, right? I would have mm -hmm. changed the mm -hmm. name of the show to gotcha, match gotcha. the domain. Okay. So another question that a lot of people have is, should I use my personal name as the name of the show, right? They hear people like Joe Rogan who uses his name as the name of the show. Yeah. What do you think about that? Well, what I ultimately would say is you're probably not Joe Rogan. Uh, if you are not someone who is well recognized on a large scale, you shouldn't do that. And you know, you might be known in your area, but you're limiting yourself when you're trying to get people to know who you are without knowing who you are yet. Yeah. It's generally not a good idea. If, if you are famous enough that people search your name, you know, at least 500 to a thousand times a month in Google, um, you might consider that, okay? If if your name is Michelle Obama, right? Yeah. You can use Michelle Obama as the name of your show be Absolutely. because you have the searches, you, ha you have the yeah. credibility from your name. It works for Joe Rogan because Joe Rogan was a celebrity before and he had name recognition and following. Mm -hmm. um, but for the rest of us that are not celebrities like that, um, it, it's probably not a good idea. And you can go to a website like semrush.com and, and those, you can type in your name if you're, if it's in question and you can see how many times <laughs> your, your name is typed on a monthly basis. Okay. And if you're not typed in maybe a thousand times a month or something already, um, you should probably pick a, a, a name for your show and a domain name for your show that have the keyword that you, that your target audience is looking for. So if you're doing a show about crafts for kids, you should probably have crafts and kids in the name of your show. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're doing a show about adoption, it should probably have adoption. Mm -hmm. Try to avoid getting cutesy, right? If you're doing a show about China adoption, you don't want to call it the red thread, right? That may, may sound really um, meaningful and yeah, symbolic and nice. Yeah, it may, may seem nice, but when people go to Apple or they go to Spotify and they're looking for a show, they're not typing the red thread, they're typing China adoption, yeah. right? If, if that's what the topic is about. And, and if you have called your show the red thread and they're searching for China adoption, it's going to be a lot harder, especially in the early days of your show for people to find you. It's going to be a lot harder to get that traction. So mm -hmm. if you want to get a boost in the early days, find your keywords and include those keywords in your domain name and uh, in the name of your show. Absolutely. So we were talking originally about uh, why a domain is something that you need when you come to us and when we're building your website. Right. So if you're building your own website, for example, on Wix or on WordPress, uh, they do host sites and you can go about building your site and then you can use the domain name they assign to you when you start building it 
to host your website. And they've become a domain name registrar, so you actually can yep. buy through them. Exactly. And I guess technically we could become a domain name registrar someday. But we do a lot of other things That's that Wix right. doesn't do. And, and, and it's not necessary for yeah. us to do that. So, yeah. so you'll need to go somewhere else to a domain name registrar to buy that domain. What exactly. are some domain name registrars you recommend? So you've got GoDaddy, which is very big and which a lot of people recognize. It's kind of the go-to. They're more Main, ex cheap expensive, also. but... But they, they probably are the go-to one, a yeah. lot of good features. And... Yeah, and if you were to type in, you know, by domain name, they'd probably be one of the first things to pop yeah. up. They're what's going to be the most easily accessible. But uh, Namecheap is another option. That's a good one. Just domain.com. Yeah. And uh, Bluehost. I use Epic. E Epic. E-P-I-K.com. E yeah. <laughs> we had to question it. Yeah, because it was spelled wrong. That's yep. right. So find a domain name. It really doesn't matter a lot. Google mm -hmm. also has one where you could... Use, I, I think it's called Google Domains. Mm -hmm. So register domain, figure out what the price is. Um, I generally pay about $10 per year per domain name. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're paying more than that, you might look at the at the pricing. Yeah. Well, and a lot of times they'll, you know, do a three-year bundle or whatever right. where you can get it for 25 bucks for three years. And then you don't have to worry about it for three years. But you have to make sure you don't forget or that you set on auto pay. So okay. you're not losing that. Your domain. That is a good point. So we had talked about expired domains.net and how there were millions of domain names that people had paid for and owned and let expire. And they were there in their database now. So will you repeat, what are those things we need to do to make sure that our domain names don't end up expired if yeah. we don't want them to? Yeah. A lot of hosts will allow you to set up in an auto renew feature where you can mm -hmm. just add your card and make sure that when it comes time for you to pay for that, you do, and you continue to own it. But if you don't do it that way, then you need to make sure it's in your calendar that you remember that whatever needs to happen happens for you to make sure you go in and renew that. Because if you don't renew it, it doesn't belong to you anymore. Yeah. It's also really important to make sure you have a good email address that you're always Absolutely. checking that has access uh, that's tied to that domain name. So, so they can let you know. That's right. When it comes up for auto renewal, you want to make sure you're seeing that domain name. So don't send that those auto renewal emails to your spam account or or use some yeah. email address you never check because yeah. then when there's a problem and it's time to renew, you'll never see it. Exactly. And three years is a long time. You know, people's cards expire and whatnot. You want yeah. to make sure that you have access to that information for sure. That's right. Another topic, if you're going to buy a domain name, is you should look at... Uh, an escrow service. So you know when you buy a house and you've got one person that owns the house and maybe even a bank that has the deed and then you have a person that's going to buy the house and a bank that has the money. Mm -hmm. So there's four different parties that want different things and need to be protected in the sale of, of a house. And the way they solve that to keep, I mean, someone could say, well, once you give me the money, then I'll give you the title to the house. But this person would say, wait, I can't, I can't give you the money until I know you've given me the title to the house. Yeah. And so, and then the banks are saying, well, I can't loan you the money until you, you know, <laughs> give the title and you know, whatever. I can't yeah. give up the title until you give the money. So there's four parties that all need to be protected. And the way you resolve that issue is you have an escrow company, an escrow agent in the middle. Mm -hmm. So basically the person that's buying gives the money. Well, first of all, you sign all the contracts. That escrow yeah. agent has the contracts and they make sure they're all signed. Then once they're signed, the escrow or the buyer pays the money into that escrow agent's bank account. And, and the escrow agent confirms that he or she has the money. And then once the money's in the bank account, he sends that information off to the seller and the seller transfers the title, the rights of that home over to the buyer. Mm -hmm. And then once the buyer can, once, once the escrow agent can confirm that the that everything's been transferred to the buyer, then the funds are released to yeah. the seller. It's so middleman. So everybody's rights are protected. Yeah. So it's very important if you're going to spend a substantial amount of money for a domain name, you you do the same thing. You use an escrow agent. I've I've seen people be messed over really bad where they sent money and then never got the domain name from the person. And so there, there's a couple companies that do a really good job of this. Uh, one is escrow.com. I think there's another one called escrowdomains.com. Um, I've used these many different times. You agree to the transactions with them. You pay a, a small fee. It's not very much money. You pay, you all agree to the agreement, um, the buyer and the seller of the domain. You mm -hmm. then pay for it. Once the money's there, then the escrow agent tells the, 
the seller to transfer the domain to you. Once the domain is transferred to you, then the escrow agent releases the funds to the seller. So mm -hmm. it protects everybody involved. If, yeah. if it's a domain name that you, you really want, that you're paying a substantial amount of money, I, I wouldn't do it without an escrow agent. Yeah, it's very smart. It's an insurance policy. Make sure that you have that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, there's a couple final points that we want to talk about. Number one, if you're trying to find if a domain name is available, uh, we recommend that you just go to one of these registrars that Lauren was talking about, like GoDaddy.com or cheap CheapDomains.com or something like that. And and there'll be a box on the main page that says search for a for a domain and mm -hmm. type it in, and they'll tell you if someone already owns it. Um, or if it's available for registration. Mm -hmm. So that's the first step. The second point that we wanted to make is if the domain name is already registered, there's a couple things you can do. You could go try to contact the owner of the domain name itself. You can go to Google and you can search for GoDaddy who is, and then on that page, you can type in a domain name and then it will take you to a page where you can, uh, where you can see who owns the domain name and the contact information. Now, most of the time nowadays, people are hiding their contact information, but mm -hmm. sometimes you can find it. There's a chance. And maybe they let you buy it from them. That's right. You can also go to archive.org and you can type in the domain name in archive.org. That's mm -hmm. a big database of what websites used to look like. And if they used to have a website on that domain name, but don't anymore, you might be able to find their contact information on archive.org. Mm -hmm. So either on one of the who is websites or on archive.org, search for the contact information and contact the owner directly. One other option you have if you want to buy the domain name from an existing owner is, is uh, you can use a intermediary that can go negotiate for you. And uh, one that I've used a whole bunch is domainagents.com. Go to domain agents, you put it in, you pay a small fee, and then they try to contact uh, that seller yeah. and they have access to their relationships with the registrars yeah. where they tend to be able to contact sellers when you're not able to find that contact we information more resources than we do as mm -hmm. just individuals. That's right. And that's what we have for you for today on domain names. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at pot up. Maybe Lauren can answer those questions for you. Absolutely. And uh, we wish you success in your podcast and, and finding the amazing domain name for that podcast. And here are my key takeaways from this episode. Number one, prioritize .com top level domains or TLDs for better recognition and credibility. Number two, keep domain names short, simple, and memorable, ideally between 15 and 30 characters. Number three, incorporate relevant keywords to improve discoverability, but don't sacrifice memorability. Number four, avoid using personal names as domain names unless you're already famous. Number five, check for trademark issues and domain availability before settling on a name. Number six, secure multiple variations of your domain to protect your brand and capture typos. Number seven, set up auto renewal and use a reliable email address for domain management. Number eight, consider using expired domain name databases to find available previously registered domains, such as expireddomains.net, which is my preference. Number nine, use domain brokers or escrow services when purchasing existing domains if you're paying a substantial price to protect your interests. And finally, number 10, ensure your domain name is easily communicatable in audio format, which is crucial for podcasts. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. I wish you success in finding the right domain name for your show. And if you're looking for an amazing podcasting platform with more than 50 integrated tools with one username and password and, and one low monthly price, then I recommend that you check out podup.com where you can get a free trial.